of 5G testbed. In the first presentation, they have discussed the 5G core network design and implementation. And in today's meeting, we would like to focus more on end-to-end -end 5G solution, as well as our progress on the cybersecurity side, an automated system for 5G jamming and interference generation, and an intelligent system for cyber detection and classification. So this is the outline of our presentation today. Uh, we introduced an introduction of the testbed development staff, background information, CCI testbed interview, and the current progress. Uh, with the core finished and being able to access more hardware recently, we focus more on providing an end-to-end -end solution as well as building a remote hardware access. We connect the system by developing run on top of the existing core network and we'll give a brief introduction about the run instrument, architecture and development. With the end-to-end -end system, uh, we, are currently, uh, we are currently building an automated system for 5G jamming and uh, interference generation, as well as intelligent system for um, cyber detection and classification. Um, other um, next, uh, following that, we'll start to talk about the use cases and some vertical applications. Some of them are still work in progress. Um, since like CCI testbed um, is, uh, um, is designed to, to serve researchers and collaborators um, that physically distributed. So we have put an emphasis on the remote access support um, to make the CCI 5G testbed convenient and to, convenient to be accessed and ready to be used immediately in other development state in each of the development stage and provide the support as a preferable way based on the types of applications. Um, last but not least, we'll discuss about the limitations and the future steps of uh, CCI 5G testbed. So um, currently the main developer of the testbed is myself and Adam, and we have received a tremendous support um, from um, our director, Luis, and um, um, Sarah, and many other uh, people. So my name is uh, Ying Wang, and I'm the lead RF engineer at CCI. Before joining CCI, I was a distinguished member of technical staff at Verizon and the senior wireless design engineer at Apple. My main areas are wireless design and the AI application in the RF and wireless communications. I'll let Adam to introduce himself. So my name is Adam Gorski. I'm an RF engineer at CCI with expertise in cellular testbed implementation. Prior to this project, I've tested the efficacy of contraband interdiction systems, supported integrated RF emissions testing on high altitude balloon platforms and designed broadband coverage maps. Oh, um, overall, CCI 5G testbed has an end-to-end -end 5G network architecture composed of open source commercial hardware and software that is cybersecurity centric. Um, CCI 5G testbed is designed for three purposes, enabling fast and targeted 5G innovation, hands-on implementation, um, and training, as well as a realistic evaluation and demonstration for new concepts and use cases. So keeping these principles in mind, we designed the testbed to be a scalable, programmable, and application agnostic platform. So since, uh, um, since our, like this year, uh, we have been following the, these principles um, to build the testbed. Um, and we, uh, um, we, like, we put a, a lot of effort in the remote access for the testbed for researchers to access it. Um, and, uh, um, and also we provide a support on flexible and scalable way, uh, the uh, su staff support. So we equipped the testbed as an AI powered infrastructure that enables 5G capability for various applications, including healthcare, V2X and power system. This is an overview of 5G testbed. It kind of has a star structure that is centered at Arlington at the hub and connected to four regional nodes. CCI 5G testbed is deployed um, in, the, in, the, in the hub and the regional nodes offering application specific um, 5G support. Together it provides a complete 5G infrastructure and development platform. Um, 
So each node has a different application centric as well as different 5G connectivity capability. So based on the application types and 5G capability, we have categorized the connection and the support from the hub into the three categories and borrow the concepts of remote compute of cloud computing, which is network service is for research with research centers that doesn't really have a 5G capability recently and would like to connect their research with 5G or evaluate the benefit of 5G for their applications. Uh, we delivered the entire 5G network and a gateway to their applications. An example for this will be the smart grid um, uh, 5G application. A PMU doesn't really have a 5G capability recently. And in, in order to evaluate how 5G can be used in power system control and monitor, we need to provide the 5G network as a service to the application. Um, platform as a service means that the application has 5G connectivity and needs a 5G platform to be delivered to them. An example will be uh, autonomous driving. Another category is for researchers is um, the, if there already has a rampart or local center that want that needed to be connected to the infrastructure into the hub, this is characterized as the infrastructure infrastructure as a service. An example of this will be the smart road in Blacksburg. And this is our current progress. So there are 10 modules in CCF 5G testbed based on the 5G architecture. Uh, it in includes the RAN-related um, run modules, core-related modules, and application-related modules. So for 5G core network, um, for the, um, most of the, the uh, development is based on a free 5G core and the free 5G manual, which are uh, open, open source the platform. Uh, for end-to-end, the, um, currently, the non-standalone end-to-end -end system is fully supported and tested. Standalone mode are, st are supported in both GNOB and core network, but due to the lack of a standalone UE in the market, we still need some time to fully test it. For items that are close to two applications, um, we have been working on cybersecurity um, attack generation and, uh, um, and, that, and, and, and the detection as well as, um, so these are uh, um, fully operable. We are adding new features to it as, uh, uh, as we progress. And uh, uh, another two parts, the Mac and the network slicing, V2X and IoT support are working in progress so far. Now I will let Adam to talk about the end-to-end -end architecture and the RAM part of our test bed. Okay, so, okay, so the current, current network architecture is shown in this slide. On the left are the core and RAN parts. The open source software free 5G core serves as both NSA and SA capable 5G core. Alternatively, we have the Amari call box with NSA and SA core functionality along with eNodeB and GNodeB SDR functionality. The network signal is fed into our RF enclosure, which houses various UEs such as test phones or USRPs. Also fed into the RF enclosure is the vector signal generator, which in our case aids in simulating cyber attacks. On the right are our sensing equipment, which we can use for real-time data capture, demodulation, protocol sniffing, and RF environment capture. Next slide, please. Um, so now I'm gonna demonstrate end-to-end uh, -end system uh, connectivity. Um, I'm gonna share this. Do you mind if I share my screen? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Screen should be visible. So on the right over here is a live camera feed of the inside of our RF enclosure currently housing two test phones um, as long as well as various antennas connected to our NR cell signal generator and spectrum analyzer. Um, and actually, yeah, so you should be able to see that it's live based off the feedback of the phone. Um, currently the test phone is downloading a large file in order to simulate downlink traffic. Um, so a printout of traffic activity can be seen in our NR cell log here. Uh, this is live as well. And then we also have a graphic display of performance metrics that we can see here. 
Um, currently, we're viewing downlink throughput for cell number one, which corresponds to the E node B, and cell number two, which corresponds to the G node B. Um, I can demonstrate end to end connectivity with a WhatsApp video call to Ying. Um, And, and there's uh, and there's Ying. <laughs> I'm glad this uh, works very well. All right, I'll let Adam to continue the demonstration. Yep. Okay. Uh, you can you can continue sharing Ying. All right. So end-to-end um, -end network connectivity enables many of the network use cases seen in this slide. Uh, most of the core and RAN-centric use cases are currently supported, whereas others are still in development. Currently, we support 5G core emulation, ciphering and authentication, control and user plane separation, application function capability, RAN reconfiguration, RAN analysis, and RAN security attack simulation. In the pipeline are use cases like RAN, UE, and core network emulation, operations automation, mobile edge computing, and network slicing. Next slide. All right. Um, so, so we would like to talk about uh, the, uh, the uh, three main areas in the use case, uh, the cybersecurity and data mining capabilities. And then we'll also brief talk about the CBRS exploration and smart grid. Um, both um, CBRS and the smart grid are, pro are work in progress. So the first one is uh, the security capability. Security building system mainly has three areas. One is the auto jamming and the interference uh, scenario generation. Uh, the second one is the SQL database for L1 to L4 layer multiple dimension data collection and the labeling. Um, the third one is the AI power detection, classification, and prediction for jamming and interference. So these three parts work together as a foundation of the smart cyber system in the test bed. And this, uh, um, the, the picture like uh, in the lower part of the slide shows how physically these are um, designed. Uh, most of the, the modules for this, for controlling um, the system are uh, based on the server. Um, so as an AI powered 5G testbed, data collection and data mining is an essential part. The green, the, the green circle part indicate where we have set up the, um, the real time collect data collection access point through the data collection. Um, several data mining projects are currently ongoing. 4G and 5G cross-layer analysis and comparison, the cross-layer component data mining. Um, the third one is oversampling based signal inside analysis. And also the last is the automated test platform with active learning based dynamic configuration. Um, so the next is, uh, um, We'll also do a demo. And before the demo, I would like to ask a question to all the audience. So, um, if for, like, um, so there is a 5G NR traffic at channel N41. Um, the frequency is, uh, um, is centered at 634.5 meg, which the frequency range is from 624.5 meg to 644.5 meg. Now you are given a CW tone generator. Uh, which is a single um, continuous wave generator that you can only generate a single frequency. So which frequency um, do you want to inject it to so that it will most affect the ongoing traffic? And to make this a little bit uh, fun, we started a pool. And uh, um, please put your selection on the pool. Um, are, you, are you guys able to see the pool? All right, I see there are some uncertainties coming. Um, so you can just say um, which color is the most of, so we're we are trying to, to um, ask your opinion, which color is the most vulnerable uh, piece in, the, in this band. Uh, 
and thank you very much for the participation. Um, or, or just let the let the pool for ongoing for a little bit. Um, we'll end the pool in like um, thirty seconds. Now let's take a look at of uh, of the setup. Um, in order for a smooth transaction, I'll just share the, the entire screen. Um, so we'll go to team. Remote access to the to the lab. Um, so um, as as we can see that the five G traffic is still ongoing, and now I'm going to start the data collection uh, point. And also start the um, the the data labeling process. Now both of them are 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 in sync. And then now let's take a look at our, how is our five G phone is doing. It looks like it's still um, the the five G download is still ongoing. And uh, um, so we'll start the cyber attack. So the cyber attack is to generate a CW tone at each of the frequency range um, that, uh, that is in the pool. And we can see that the, um, the data collection and the labeling has started. Um, at the same time, I'm going to stop the pool and end the pool. And thank you very much for the, for the participation. I will share the result in a sec second. All right, um, now let's set, um, this is the result of the pool. So it looks like purple is the, the champion here. Most people select the 627.5, um, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit in a little later. And then the orange one, the center frequency also has a large number of uh, selections. Now with the, um, we also would like to take a look at of the ongoing traffic. Um, what is it? Uh, um, a live display of it. So, um, so this shows that um, the throughput and the retransmission, which is most effective to the users. So this shows like as the traffic, as the um, attack is ongoing, how is it affecting the throughput? The first one shows the relationship between the throughput and transmission rate. The second one shows the histogram of the throughput. And the third one shows that throughput um, result update as the time goes by. So as this will, uh, because each of the frequency, center frequency is set for 60 seconds. So this will, uh, will be ongoing for, um, for several minutes. So in the same time, I would like to talk about why we are doing this demo. Uh, we, are, oh, we are doing this. Um, so that um, this, So as the um, so five G five G and NR and also the previous cellular networks LTE are vulnerable to jamming attacks, which create delivery interference to the uh, legitimate users. Although the NR interface reuses the concept of uh, several LTE uh, signals and the, the the channels, but um, the the configuration defined in NR has a lot has a lot of additional flexibility and the features to enhance the performance. The flexibility and the co the the, um, the performance enhancement allow the vertical customization. However, it does increase the difficulties and the complexity of cybersecurity in the NR. So the traditional case by case anti jamming strategy and methodology become limited and powerless because of the flexibility. Uh, is increasing exponentially. So there is a strong need to understand what NR network are vulnerable to, like uh, to understand that NR network are vulnerable to various types of jamming attacks and interference. And also um, we it needs an a, a intelligent solution that can automatically learn from the experience, detect the jamming interference in a real time basis so that it can be used in the field. 
Um, Adam, can you also check the, um, uh, to make sure that the traffic is ongoing? All right. Yeah, it looks good. Looks great. Um, so now let's, uh, um, I think our test is almost uh, um, finished. We have several, um, we have some of the um, attacks still ongoing, probably will take another another two minutes. Now let's take a inside of the uh, 5G signal. So um, this is a, this is, this is a what, um, this is an inside of the signal looks like. Um, the, um, in the middle, it shows that the 5G NR um, allocation, the, the 5G NR uh, resource allocation. And we can notice that on the left, which is the most different part compared to LTE, and we can notice that in the left part, there is a small blue donor shape of signal. Uh, if we take a closer look at it, that's the corset which is carrying the synchronization um, and synchronization and control signal, the PDCCH and DCI signal. Um, because the, the rest of the data load kind of relying on the synchronization of this part. So we need to see like how vulnerable this is, whether it's more vulnerable or less vulnerable. Um, so besides that, we are also doing uh, vulnerable at different resource flag and also comparing the flexibility and robustness comparing to LTE and NR through the, through the system. Um, it looks like, um, It looks like a, a lot of uh, uh, traffic has uh, um, has not showing in this part. Um, but uh, let's finish the, the, the test. We are almost done, and then we can take a look at of the result. Oh, uh, that's why because now you switch to LTE um, instead of uh, an R. So the current five G system um, in the market is still. The, the current uh, 5G UE in the market are still kind of unstable. As we are currently using S20, which is the best one that we can find, um, or, or, although it still shows some uh, um, instability. So now let's, uh, um, while well, Adam is restarting it, let's take a look at of, uh, um, this is uh, before the, the, um, the demo, which we have been showing. It actually shows that at 626 is the most vulnerable part. Um, and we can take a, a pulling at this, which one, um, I think a lot of people are choose the purple part, which is 627, which is very close. Um, the results show that the 626, uh, which is where the, uh, the core set is located at, is actually more vulnerable to be attacked by the CW2. Um, so let's take a look at this. Um, Adam, is the traffic back? the 5G traffic. So as we can see that sometimes you will just switch back to LTE. And uh, um, so um, at this time, what we can do is put it in the airplane mode and then put it back to the 5G mode. Uh, it will help it to switch to 5G signal. Now the 5G signal has been picked up. Um, let's restart the LTE, the, the FTP. Um, and then like from here, uh, we'll be able to see that the, the, the traffic has been picked up. Um, so this is a, a part that has been, um, let's now switch back. So it actually shows through, through the experiment like this, it actually, it actually shows that tell, tell us the, quant, the quantitative analysis of each of the frequency, how vulnerable they are. So how do we use this? Um, so, um, so, so in order to, to, to make a use of this, we, all, we need to know that um, when, when is the 5G vulnerability, uh, when is the core set that uh, is being attacked and how is attacked in 5G, the core set, um, set is actually, uh, uh, the user is, uh, is configurable. It can be 
um, located in different frequency and also in different uh, um, in different time time slot. So that that gives an advantage for the jammers to use very short um, and and very uh, short and single and, and narrow band signal to jam it. So in, and so it's very necessary for us to be able to detect it in a very short time. And here it shows a result of how um, the NR-based cyber classification can, uh, can, uh, can detect the CW attack of the, whether there is a corset detection, the corset attack detected or uh, there's no corset detected. The accuracy is actually very high at point 87, um, which AOC. So in this curve, it shows that this blue curve shows the um, the reference, and then um, the orange line, if it's more close to the edge of the rectangular, means the model is more robust. And if the um, if the orange line is more close to the reference, it means that the uh, the model is not really doing its job. It couldn't tell the difference between the corset attack and a non corset attack. Um, so um, by doing this, we actually show a pretty high um, precision and the recall um, for both the attack, the, the corset attack. And this, uh, right now this result is uh, in the lab. When we move it to, to outside in the field, we we'll need to collect more, uh, more data in order to make sure the accuracy. But overall, it shows a very promising result. Um, so next, uh, this is the the end of uh, uh, the the demo. Let me sh put the slides back. Um, so this is uh, the next uh, application of vertical field is in the CBRS. So in CBRS, um, we have done some work in, in uh, on both CBRS and C, C, uh, C band exploration. It, CBRS enabled a lot of opportunities in 5G, including dynamic spectrum accessing private network, et cetera. Our system is compatible with the Google CBRS spectrum accessing system. It also has a 5G enabled Inobi and Genobi SAS access, uh, dynamic spectrum access uh, assisted SAS uh, system. So our CBRS system uh, enabled a field testing and deployment for vertical applications for us. Um, the next one is the smart grid and 5G and the connectivity. Smart grid and uh, uh, power system is another project that we're working together with our collaborators. Uh, CCI Harp serves as a network service, uh, network as a service for uh, uh, transmitting uh, the PMU and the sm uh, smart meter data. Uh, PMU and smart meters are integrated uh, with IoT um, devices and connected to CCI Harp infrastructure. Network slicing and the MAC are used for latency reduction. Uh, status monitoring function provides a periodic or on-demand status information throughout the CCS 5G network. Intelligent control functions provide low latency and real-time control based on the status. Um, and uh, uh, V2X is another area, um, very important area that we are working uh, with uh, um, Josh Mason together. Uh, so, um, especially in uh, in the multi-type uh, 5G communication, in virtual communications, um, the latency control is very very important. MMTC is used for traffic light, traffic related IoT devices, which and uh, um, the ultra reliable low latency is for vehicle communications. This increases the complexity on network slicing. Uh, we are working. Um, on the network slicing deployment and orchestration and also the real-time analysis for V2X currently. Uh, next, Adam will talk about the remote access of 5G test bed. Um, so due to the current state of things, we've developed two methods of test bed access. Uh, for core centric use cases, researchers will receive a configurable virtual machine with free 5G core software implemented on it to be loaded onto the researcher's local machine. Further configuration can be done on one's own or with assistance from the testbed support staff. For end-to-end -end network use cases, researchers will be granted remote access to testbed hardware with support staff available for any configuration or development queries. Next slide. Um, there are a few developmental limitations we're currently facing. First off, only NSA end-to-end -end functionality has been implemented thus far. 
This limits development and testing of standalone research not fully focused on the core. Our next step here is to determine a UE that supports standalone mode as the rest of the network is standalone mode capable. We currently only possess one 5G base station. This limits our ability to emulate base station handover. The next step is to introduce a second G node B into the testbed, either open source or license based. We are also currently unable to simulate a large number of UEs as well as heavy loading conditions in our network. To remedy this, we plan on introducing a UE simulator into the testbed. Next slide. Um, so this is a question that we have for you guys. So, uh, which types of metrics are you interested in collecting? So we have set up a platform for cybersecurity attack and detection. And in the background, it's collecting data. Um, it, uh, right now, it's not collecting data 24 hours, but it has the capability of doing that. Uh, we are collecting um, like some um, uh, like retransmission rate, latency jitter, um, and the throughput is kind of data. But we would like to know that what types of metrics are you guys interested um, in collecting that we can uh, collaborate and work together. Um, since the, the Zoom pool doesn't allow text input, so if you can give us some uh, feedback in the, um, in the chat box, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, and that's, that's end our um, presentation today. Um, and now we are open to questions. And at the same time, let me take a look at of the, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll just run the demo um, again in the background so that uh, we can see that uh, if the 5G and LTE are, if the 5G is resistant, how um, our system is collecting the data. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, so Dr. Reid mentioned that uh, uh, a list of the key 5G KPIs for the DAPA program has been identified and uh, um, uh, we'll be very happy to have these uh, numbers and uh, try it on our test bed. Um, any other questions? Um, any, any Hi, Ying. Hi. This is, this is Ed, Ed Colver. How are you? Good. How are you? Glad um, you join us. Your, uh, the current configuration that you have right now, does that um, have connectivity to the 5G core uh, with free 5GC, or is that a 5G core? I mean, do you have everything connected together right now? How do you set up the different configurations? Right now, you have both E node B and G node B connected? Yes. So um, let me go back to, to this slide. So right now for uh, for E node B and G node B, we're using a Maricle box as the E node B and G node B, and both of them are connected connected to free 5G core. Um, a Maricle box also has its own 4G ETC and 5G core. Um, these two can switch back and forth. Um, so re re just IP based, you can, by changing the IP address, you can switch between the 5G core and the uh, Amari internal um, 5G EPC, 4, 4G EPC and 5G core. So um, everything is connected together. Uh, we use free 5G core sometimes because it's open source and we can change the settings inside of it. Uh, we are also um, sometimes using the AmeriCorps because for non-standalone AmeriCorps um, has, a better, has done a better job than free 5G core. But for standalone, it, both of them are pretty good. And the free 5G core give you more freedom or flexibility to change or reconfigure. So you can connect, you can set it up at standalone with the Amari call box 5G core? Yes. 
So both of them stand uh, like support both standalone and non standalone. Um, and also, I'm okay. Base station support both standalone and standalone. The only part that we are missing on the standalone part of one right now is the UE. There is no current standalone available UE in the market. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, any any other questions? Let me take a look at the chat window. Um, so we have, uh, and please feel free to just uh, um, open up the speak, like uh, use the, the audio to, to ask the questions. Um, so one question from uh, uh, Chen Qing is, uh, if we access 5G from Blacksburg lab, how do we separate the 5G performance indicators from our elements in the communication? How do we, uh, from other elements in the communication? Um, could you elaborate the question a little bit? Um, which part do you, um, which element do you, uh, do you need specifically? So, uh, thank you, Yin. So uh -huh. the, the, the complication is that if we access 5G from our lab, there's one question in my mind, whether I have to access the campus network first, then get to the 5G. Uh -huh. Okay. And so if I want to be able to say, because of 5G, I can improve the performance by this much, Am I able to take out just this part of 5G and be able to compare that clean comparison? Got it. Thanks for, for the explanation. This is a great question and it's kind of similar to our project with the uh, smart grid because uh, when you're talking about remote access, um, like there is a latency that uh, caused by either campus network or the internet. And because our data collection in multiple locations, we'll be able to exactly measure what, well, how much is the latency and take that part out of it. So that um, any throughput or latency restrictions caused by um, the internet, like the non-free and uh, non-5G testbed part can be, um, can be measured and can be uh, reduced or removed from the performance measurement. We have a little more complication than that because uh, our lab has two pieces. One is the, the computation and the other is actual power devices and there'll be optical fiber there in some data transmission. Mm -hmm. So that part, you will not be able to measure that, right? Um, so things that happened in, the, in, in your lab, we can still, like if we have access to it, we'll be able to set up the measurement and the integrate okay. that into the database. Um, so it kind of depends on how accessible uh, the device are. Um, right now, like we have, uh, as shown in the slides, we have multiple um, multiple elements, uh, multiple devices that we uh, we have set up system to sync everything together and labeling them and integrate them into the existing database. So the database is keep on increasing as we develop. It. And I think. Uh, if we have access to, to, to your lab or to the devices that you, you're currently working on, we'll be able to, um, to integrate them uh, into the database and you can uh, fetch them or, or you can, if you uh, prefer, you can have your own database, we can, we can put it there um, so that the data can be isolated. Great, I think that can be done, yeah. Thank All right. you. That's great, we can talk offline for, for more details. Um, let me just share the, the screen for the... Um, 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 well, answering the questions, um, I think there is another question that uh, in the um, in the chat box. So um, I think uh, uh, Yunfan, sorry if I pronounce your your name uh, incorrect. Um, so is the system ready for us to download and use with current functions? Is there also a manual? So the system, um, is, this is a little bit of its last time when we had the, uh, the, the core part because it's mostly software. But this time a lot of them are, are in hardware. Um, so you, I don't think you can download them, but uh, um, the, the software, the, the, like the coding part, 
um, the cybersecurity system, the controlling code, we have already set up a repository. So I can uh, join, I can, I can give you access to the repository. We can give you access to the repository. Um, but in order to access it, uh, it will be like us, like using, right now we're using TeamView and AnyDesk, AnyDesk, this kind of software to access to the lab uh, and be able to perform it. So we only support one person at one time to use the system. Um, we haven't really set up a sandbox. Um, so to answer your question, uh, the software part, uh, if you, uh, so the, the, the open source part, yes, it's uh, ready to be downloaded and used. And then for the hardware part, uh, TeamView is ready. We also like just uh, send us uh, uh, the detailed information and then we can give you the access to our system. Um, Another system is, uh, is the free 5G ready to be used in a MARI box or some development is needed. This is uh, from Chen, uh, Chen Sheng. Um, so um, there is a little bit of uh, work that is needed and we can help you on that to integrate 5G, free 5G uh, with, um, to work with a MARI call box. Um, this is, actually this is a, a very interesting area that we have, uh, received uh, um, some uh, uh, invitation collaboration from some universities in Europe that they are also working on it. And so we are collaborating with them. So it's, it's not hard. Uh, you just need a little bit of work and uh, um, let us know we can work through on that, that with you. Uh, did I answer your questions? And please feel free to just uh, turn on the audio and ask the questions. At the same time, let's take a look at of the, um, the so this is uh, what it, this, this is what it looks like when uh, the, free five, the, the 5G communication has been ongoing and then um, the cyber attacks is on different, different uh, uh, frequency range. And we can see that the purple one is 626.5, uh, which from the distribution or from the, um, the, the time the throughput versus time, it shows the, the, the most affected. And uh, um, if we were, um, so let's see that, I'll give it a try that we have built a model to detect the, um, detect the core set attack. And let's see that for this one, whether we can, uh, we can tell the, we can be, we will be able to classify it. And this is the result. Um, it shows uh, AUC of 0.82 um, for, for the one that we just seen for when we just collected. Um, and this is, uh, I think uh, for, a point, for AUC that is larger than 0.8, uh, it's pretty high accuracy um, or pretty robust model. Uh, we, we, we still like adding more features to it and uh, um, like digging more into this to improve the, the, the accuracy. But this is uh, uh, what the current. So the, the one important part of this is the detection of this. Uh, if we turn off this one, um, if we go back here. So an important part of this is uh, we only take, it only take us one second, uh, actually 0 0.8, 0 0.8 second to be able to detect whether is a, there is a corset attack or not. So that like see that um, almost uh, every a few samples will be able, just by a few samples uh, here, will be able to tell that whether there is a corset attack and at which frequency it is. It doesn't rely on which frequency or uh, what's the, um, the user's power, like as long as the, the attack duration is larger than 0.8 seconds, we'll be able to detect it in the real time. Um, any any other questions? Oh, I think we have more questions. Um, this is from uh, Tamar. Um, so, are there enough documents or resources to uh, replicate this to replicate this testbed at other locations? How hard it is to replicate? Um, so, um, from hardware, I would say like we already list all the hardwares or devices for the testbed. Um, the connection, the integration and the connection development take us several months to set it up. Um, there are some part of the code since we have already um, the build the system, you can, um, you can join our repository um, and collaborate with us. So I won't say it's 
it's it's very hard which we can work with you to shorten the learning curve of uh, use it um regarding the documentation uh we have some of the documentation and we are working on to um for user manual and the training uh, process so we'll let you know how um once it's ready Um, any other questions? Um, sorry, I think uh, um, by using multiple screens, it's a little bit delay in using the chat window. And if you have any qu other questions, please um, uh, just join the discussion. Right now, the time is for this discussion time. And we're very happy to work with uh, others. I think um, having a, uh, we put a, um, a high prioritize on the cybersecurity attack because uh, 5G, um, the cybersecurity attack is, is, is more difficult because due to the flexibility uh, in physical layer in upper layers and then having a system um, set up the system that is able to delete, to collect the data to um, do labeling the data and then use it for classification and for the research um, it's, it's we, we think it's very important and we are very happy to collaborating with you on it deep learning has made a lot of progress but there's currently no um, there's currently no available public um, database for a lot of the RF or wireless 5G related trainings. So building this, I think it will be um, very beneficial for, um, for many people. I think we have more questions in the chat window. Um, Thank you um, for, for everyone participating on this. And uh, um, please let us know any other questions or suggestions. Um, I think uh, Jerry has a question. It seems that Mary Callbox and the free 5G both have the ability to emulate a 5G core. What, equi what equipment was actually used in your experiment to emulate the core? So for this experiment, we are using um, the Mari core just because uh, free 5G core uh, non-standalone is not as stable as the Mari core. And the, the most of the focus on this one is um, um, is on the on the sec security side, but uh, uh, we we are totally fine to to uh, to do the end-to-end -end system using the uh, free five G part. Um, um, another question also from Jerry is: Can free five G core emulate a slicing? So this is a um, kind of a tricky um, kind of a. a well, it's a it's a good question. We have been putting a lot of effort on this. So, free five G core itself uh, supporting the uh, the network slicing uh, function in the core part, but for the orchestration and everything else, it is in the free five G manual. Uh, free five G manual is not very doc it's not that documented very well. So, um, we are still trying to figure out everything on the free five G manual in order to work with free five G core. Um, and so, um, uh, Jerry, let me know if I answer the question. Um, the next one is from Wen Jin. Uh, is how easy for a student to start an experiment on the actual testbed? Is there a software environment one can start to design the experiment locally first and then upload it to the testbed for actual? Te that's a that's a for. Well, let me finish the question. Um, is there a software environment that one can start to design and experiment locally first and then upload it to the testbed for actual testing? Um, so for, um, for a student to, 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 ex to start the experiment 
uh, on the actual uh, test bed is not uh, that hard. Like we can provide a training for the student and uh, probably takes several days um, or depends on how, how, how much time the students have like a week um, to be able to, to, to use it. Um, regarding the software environment that can start and design uh, experiment locally. So the only thing is uh, we have a lot of uh, interface to like in the in our software in the code, there is a lot of interface uh, to the device. And uh, if you have the device in the lab, uh, it, you can totally do the experiment locally first and then upload it to the test bed. But if you don't have the, the device, you, you need to mock up the, the hardware interface part first. Like we can work with you on that and to, to run a simulation locally and then upload it to the test bed for the actual test. Um, I think this is a great uh, suggestion. We should uh, uh, work on some of the uh, mock up the hardware part so that more people can, can take the time to um, to, to design the experiment locally and simulate it and then just upload it to test it. Um, so we can talk offline to see how to coordinate how to do this. Um, and also we, we put a question in it is uh, which matrix, what are the metrics that you would like to collect uh, through uh, on the test bed uh, on like data collection or other aspects, uh, please let us know. You can put it on the chat window or you can send an email to us uh, so we can collaborate together. Um, any, any other questions? Thank you so much for the for the participation and for the great questions. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, um, to to change the parameters of the uh, to to reconfigure the, the call box in real time. Um, so it's not so for the um, one of the question is to uh, to change the parameters of the call box in real time. Um, that's not, uh, uh, that's totally, um, uh, like on the fly, that's totally available. Um, we have, so there is a config file that we can change the parameter or switch band um, being able to, um, to, to increase the power, change the parameters, change upper layer um, settings. Um, we haven't really fully tested how, like during the transmission, if we change it, how it's affected the ongoing um, ongoing traffic, but uh, um, I guess with a short, I think with a short delay, that's totally uh, doable. And thank you again for the for the other participations and uh, questions. Uh, we'll send out uh, the uh, slides and the recordings uh, shortly uh, after we concluded and everything. All right, um, thank you all.